there we are. Okay, very, very nice to see everybody. Welcome uh, to this webinar. Uh, today we will go, we will, we will talk about the national and regional OA publishing platforms. Um, this webinar was developed um, together um, with um, Vanessa Proudman for, from Spark Europe, Jaron Sondervan from, the, from Utrecht University, and myself, Agata Morka, communications officer at Spark Europe. Uh, so it is our pleasure to welcome you here uh, today. Before, uh, before I start with the program for today, I just wanted to have a feel of who it is that we have in the room and from which countries you are. So if you don't mind to put which country you're from in the chat window, that would be absolutely fantastic because that will, I can see many faces that I know, but I also see many people that I haven't seen before, which is absolutely great. So. Goodness, okay, I see Norway, France, the Netherlands, Finland, Poland, Austria, Quebec, very nice, Scotland, England, Croatia again, Greece, Slovenia, Italy, absolutely fantastic. So really the entire world is here with us today. That's really great to see. I would also like to know a little bit more, um, and Denmark, very good, hello, hello Denmark and Germany. Hello, Germany. I would like to know a little bit more about what uh, what are your roles? What what are uh, what are your roles in the open open access open open science space? So I have a little poll prepared for you. So I will launch it in a second, and if you can if you can vote, that would be absolutely great. So the question for the poll, I hope you can see it on the screen, is who do we have in the room? Please choose one group that is closest to you. And I will share the results of the poll in a second with you. Very curious, actually, to see. Mm, I can see. I can see how it's changing. It's looking quite exciting. I have to say. I have to say that for now, libraries are leading. But let's see. I'll give it another minute or so so that everyone can, I see that 83%, 85% have already voted. Okay, last call for the poll. And I am ending it and sharing the results with you. I hope you can see them. So libraries, most people are representing libraries. Very interesting. Then we have a really big representation from OA publishers, 21%. And then in the third place, we have research institutions. So quite, uh, quite a diverse landscape here, which I am very happy to see. We also have open science organizations and we have 9% for other. These, um, those of you who put in other, if you don't mind uh, specifying in the chat window, what it is that you mean by other, that would be also absolutely great. Okay, so without further ado, I am going to start the show properly now. So uh, as you know, the, the, the webinar is organized by Spark Europe and Spark Europe together with other organizations such as Opera SP um, and, and others including Coalition S and Science Europe who commissioned a report on um, diamond open access, uh, we all collectively see huge potential uh, in the OE diamond sector. And this webinar is the next step. It follows from, um, from the landscape analysis that uh, was published earlier this year. And I'm sure that you're all familiar with it, or at least some of you have read the report about the OA diamond that was um, published early, early this year. One thing that we haven't really had a chance to look at quite closely in this report were um, different challenges and, uh, but also different opportunities that can be um, very particular to a spe specific region or to a specific country within Europe. So this is why we are here today because we're here to talk about different publishing uh, cultures and also different ways of approaching um, OA publishing in chosen countries, or not only countries, also in chosen regions of Europe. So this is why we're here today. Um, and I think that 
what is perhaps uh, quite important to mention at the very beginning before we start the discussion here is that Spark Europe uh, is very much invested in um, looking uh, closely in, in ways of publishing open access that do not involve APCs or BPCs. Hence our interest in the Diamond OA publishing and we are really striving to um, find ways of creating a more diverse and a more equitable open access um, publishing landscape. Um, and uh, of course, um, we know that uh, in, some in some countries, um, there are cases uh, where um, publishing OA have been done for many years uh, in the form of OA Diamond. Um, but, uh, and it was done in different domains for different languages and so on. And um, it, was, it was supported by uh, regional and national platforms. But we also know that there are countries in which such, um, such um, cases or such, um, such approach will not be adopted for, for a plethora of reasons, some of them being also political. So what we would like to do to, here today is to dive a little bit deeper into different examples of national and regional um, open access publishing platforms. And uh, we will have five presentations coming from five different countries. And I am very, very pleased to welcome our panelists for today here. So I will present them uh, in an alphabetical order. Uh, so first on my list is um, uh, a representative from Catalonia. So um, a warm welcome to Luis Angalada, who is director of the Catalan Academic Library Consortium. And he will talk to us about how OA publishing is done in Catalonia, and he will talk about their original, original OA publishing platform. Welcome, Luis. Next, you can wave to everyone so that everybody can see who you are. Um, next, uh, I have a representative from Croatia, Jadranka Stojanowski. Welcome, Jadranka. Uh, Jadranka is associate professor at the University of Zadar, Rudor Boscovich Institute. I hope that I haven't butchered uh, too much uh, the pronunciation here. Welcome, Jadranka. Next, we have Finland. And from, from Finland, we have Sami Suryamaki, who is head of publications, uh, Federation of Finnish Learned Societies. Welcome, Sami. Very good to have you here. And um, next, I have France. And from France, I have Sandra Gigoni, who's deputy uh, editorial director at Open Edition or L'Edition uh, Ouverte or, um, in France. And last but not least, the representative of the Netherlands, we have Jan Willem Weinen, product, uh, pro project lead on openjournals.nl project. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, we will also hear from Jarun Zondervan, who as I mentioned, was the mastermind actually behind this, this webinar, who will also talk to us a little bit about the situation in the Netherlands. So now it's over to you and over to, to your, so the floor is yours. So we will start with Catalonia first and with Luis. So Luis, just a second, I'm going to share my screen so that you can, you can start your presentation. So share a screen. There we go. And hopefully oh. you can see it. Okay. I think it's still can loading. I start? Yes. Can you see it? Okay. So okay, thank you. Perfect. First of all, to say that I am very happy and very proud. Yeah. See, I am very happy, very proud to be to have this opportunity to to explain that we are doing in Catalonia because we started, as I will explain, we started putting content in the in at the beginning. Our idea was to put content in the in the internet, but that I want to explain first, if you are so kind, Agatha, to to go to the next diapo, uh, uh, that. The, our project is based in a, in a definition very broad of the scholarly journals. We know that almost in the beginning and still now, probably our platform, our platform is more a dissemination and publishing platform that are 
only a publishing platform. Our idea is that there are, I will repeat this idea, that our idea is that the, there are a lot of cultural and research information that is not included in the most in, in the most important journals. And in this sense that we are doing is to collect uh, the scholarly journals published in Catalonia, but uh, scholarly for us is, has a, a definition very broad. So we, we accept all the journals that are, uh, have to be published by, by cultural associations, universities, research centers, and we accept journals, not newsletters, not magazines, but we accept journals. Some ones can not have peer review. Sorry for that, that I know that this is a sin, but we are very conscious that with this sin, we are contributing to the dissemination uh, uh, the, the, to the, the, the cultural and scientific and research context. Even on that, uh, almost uh, half of the, our journals has some kind of quality seal, but as, as probably is in your case and in our case that we are publishing or disseminating journals in, in humanities, in soya, social sciences, uh, soya and so, social science, in a lot of cases, these journals has not, um, has not uh, peer review, formally peer review pro, uh, processes. We are publishing journals published in Catalonia, not in Catalan, in Catalonia. This means that uh, the majority of our the journals that we are disseminating and publishing are in Catalan, but it's not, not completely, probably uh, 50%. The others are in Spanish or in English, or it doesn't matter because, and we are including also journals that are published in uh, Valencia or Balearic Inland and also north of Catalonia. We have, it's for that that we have a lot, a lot of journals, uh, 558, this is a lot, but this includes, I insist, not only highly scientific journals, but the, this include scholarly journals. Um, in general, the journals are uh, still uh, alive, but some ones are discontinued because our platform is used for the publishers. You can see here that we are working with 110 different institutions that are using the platform to put their content in the to put the content in in the internet even if they are still publishing the journals in print that we are insisting is that we are in the net and the journals uh, has to be open and the majority of the articles are in open but it's also true that in some cases the last issue is embargoed in the next slide that is, you can see that we started for uh, uh, we started in 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 long long time ago. But because we started as an electronic database, that is that it was on fashion twenty years ago. No, to 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 have an electronic database. How how the things change it? But if you uh, go more quick, Agatha, you can see that we rapidly we we had the idea is why not to add the content to the database. And finally, we was born as a portal of uh, open access journals in 2004. So we, uh, we after reframed the, the, the database uh, to move to open journal system, and we uh, reached the situation that we have now, uh, uh, the, the situation, and we changed to the new uh, version of open journal system recently. The, the, the important is if you go to the next uh, images, uh, Agatha, uh, uh, the important is to, to ask why. Why? Because we were at the time and still now convinced that there are a lot of culture and science outside the of knowledge of Scopus. Uh, good science, good culture, good information, good data. We are librarians. The, our principal motivation is to offer to the people good information. And the information is not only the information that is uh, highly reputed in, in only uh, in a small part of the journals that are published in the world. Um, this is our motivation after we had another we, we are in 2004, so it's a long time ago. The second is, and I will insist because uh, I think that this is still uh, a motive, uh, still valid, that uh, there are, the information is disseminated in print, but is created in, in digital, so we can to capture. 
the information in digital, even if the information is disseminated in print. And this is that we are doing. And finally, we as a consortium of libraries, we are interested in, in content. And content is, uh, in order to fulfill the, the library's mission, uh, our mission is to help uh, to, to help that content arrive at the, at, the, at the final user. And this is that we did with this, with this platform, uh, helping people to, accept, to go uh, to, the, to, the, to the public. In the next slide, uh, uh, slide sorry, the next slide, uh, I will the organizers are going to ask us a bit about the, our local publishing culture. It's difficult to talk about that, but you know that the culture is, it depends if you are in, in, in which level of the academy uh, you are. But my, my vision, and probably sorry for to be very conservative, but in my opinion, our landscape still is a landscape that lives in the print world. Uh, this 40, uh, 100 journals that I am talking about. Some ones are clearly, I, I mentioned it before, some ones are in the journal citation reports, but the majority, they are more in the print world than in the digital world. In, in, in a lot of cases, is who the publishers are small societies that don't have infrastructure, that uh, they are very attached to their members, they, they are afraid that the mem they will lose memberships membership if they uh, move the journal to, to a print that they reserve by postal mail. If they move to a, an open access journal, they will lose membership. This is, in my opinion, this is the general view with a lot of exceptions. But uh, we think that our mission is to prepare the journals published in Catalonia for the future. In the future will be future, be, the, the future will be open. And uh, in the future, if you want to, the future will be global. And uh, journals need, and I repeat that in some cases, the journals are, that we are publishing are published by very humble societies or associations. And for them is to move from the print to the digital, they, they need some help. The services that we are providing is, uh, and when we was born, the, the services, the first service is that we allow to the journals to be in the web. Uh, let let know that I am not uh, telling to publish a journal, an international, uh, a digital journal, because a lot of journal that they are, they are doing is offering us the content and we put the content in the net. The journal in, we can call in this case, the journal that is a digital journal. But the second, and I think this is important, and also is the difference with other platforms that we trying is not only to offer to put journals in the network, but also to offer a portal, because we have the assumption that the all the journals together has uh, probably a, has a content that more or less is uh, this content can be interested interesting for the general public that lives in Catalonia. This is a general assumption and do know, we know that in a lot of cases this is not true, but in a lot of cases, yes. And really the, the, the record that the, the, the platform is acting as a, a, a portal and we think that uh, some, our target audience can uh, um, is not only the researcher, but also the teachers and people interested in education and, and culture. Um, at the end, we Reco become becomes uh, a quality sale, more or less. No, we never uh, wanted to be, but at the end, a lot of uh, journals want to be there because this is a, like a quality sale, and we are also sure that we are attracting visit because we are very our size is quite uh, big. The the cost is uh, very slow because we is not a. a and a standalone in initiative. We we are uh, we we the project is a, a small part of the a big uh, portfolio of services that we are offering to the universities, and even we are trying to uh, to receive some fees for some services that we are uh, providing. At the end, who is uh, uh, is a is a diamond platform because it's subsidized by universities. University that universities and our government understand that this is the role that we have to play. 
and finally it works uh, it works uh, because the publishers in the next slide Agatha please it works because the the publisher the institution is uh, uh, works for for the project so uh, the who is loading the articles is the publisher not a central staff we have a, an editorial board that takes decisions about the inclusion or not the journal uh, in the platform, so maintaining some level of quality. And centrally, we as a consortium, we maintain the portal, we take care of the metadata exporting, exportation, preservation, and things. Our target public is not only the researchers, but also uh, public institutions that we are helping them to publish or to be in the net general public and Catalan culture. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Luis. Um, Yadranka, you are next. Thank you, Agatha. Scholarly journals in Croatia have a long tradition. And uh, first scientific and professional journals were published in uh, 1851. Today we have several hundred scholarly journals. Still, the publishing landscape in Croatia has some peculiarities that I would like to introduce to you. Each year, Croatian Ministry of Science and Education announces a call for journal funding. The publishing board then evaluates each journal and assigns some points based on compliance with the evaluation criteria in place. In 2021 subsidies are allocated for almost 200 journals by approximately 8,000 euros per journal per year. Additional possibilities for journal funding uh, include annual costs from Croatia, Croatian Academy of Science and Arts and Croatian Ministry of Culture. Moreover, there is support from universities and much, much voluntary work included in journal publishing. However, research assessment system in Croatia does not value Croatian journals enough, and researchers are not motivated so much to publish in local journals. Criteria for uh, career advancement are mainly based on number of papers and the reputation of the journal in which these papers were published. Uh, reputation is, uh, of course, proved by the journal impact factor, including quartile within the discipline and the share of indexation in various thematic and multidisciplinary databases. Therefore, local journals need to be indexed to attract uh, quality content. At present, there are 142 journals in directory of open access journals, approximately 130 in Web of Science Core collection, almost 150 in Scopus, and all Christian journals are indexed by Google Scholar. Kerchuk was launched in 2006, and the initial goals were to provide common infrastructure for online journals and a single access point for all creation journals, peer-reviewed and not peer-reviewed. In the beginning, Kerchuk served as full text repository, and later on, open journal system was added to support editorial workflows. We provided a metadata exchange and interoperability with major international search engines and repositories from the very beginning. Additionally, open access was strongly promoted and later very soon became mandatory. Importance of creation journal reflects to the press protection of excellence in locally relevant research, according to Leiden Manifesta, terminology development in creation language, and editorial guidance for early career researchers. Furthermore, by journal publishing, academic community develops its research and academic culture and increases its reputation. There are no cost for journal hosting on Herchak, and most journals are free of APC. We didn't investigate in depth, but according to our knowledge, only 10 to 20 creation journals are charging authors. Regarding publishing in the creation language, we can see 
quite a popularity of some published content. On this example from the Philology Journal, a number of visits and downloads showed a huge interest in the content published in creation language. Kutchuk statistics also show the popularity of journal uh, creation journals, and most popular journals had more than half a million visits and few hundred thousand downloads per year. For this webinar, I did some analysis from uh, uh, 510 Herchak journals, almost 400 are active and others are discontinued or suspended because of inactivity. Uh, distribution by discipline uh, show, shows us that 60% uh, of journal, Herchak journals are from the fields of social sciences and humanities. And uh, most journals are published by the universities and learn and professional societies uh, more than uh, half, if we will include research performing is institutions, then we will get three quarter of uh, all uh, publisher types. Herchuk journals publish their content in 22 languages and only 70% of journals published in one language. 16% in two languages, 9% in six languages, and we have two journals publishing in 14 languages. If we look at the distribution uh, of journals per language, we can see that, uh, for example, German speaking authors can choose between 109 creation journals if the manuscript is in German language. If we look at the number of published articles per language, the dominance of creation and English is evident. And that was the reason for using a, a logarithmic scale for y-axis. Also in the graph, we included only languages represented by more than 50 articles on Herchak. Herchak examples show, show us that it's possible to run journal publishing on not-for-profit basis without publication charges. The costs are distributed among universities, research institutes, ministries, and research funders. The whole scholarly publishing ecosystem could benefit from such a collective investment in journal publishing. Additionally, journal publishing enhanced with academic sector promotes more inclusive scholarly communication. Herchak focuses its effort on preserving academic or non-commercial publishing. We learned from Herchak that national publishing platforms could improve the transparency of editorial policies, communication between editors and between editors and other stakeholders, visibility, findability, and impact of the published content, and in cooperation with the Creation Association for Scholarly Communications, NAC, education is supported, and many webinars on different aspects of uh, open science were organized. In the future, we would like to have more dynamic, interactive, and multimedia content included, machine readable articles, different formats available uh, other than PDF, ORC ID for all authors, uh, digital object identifier for all articles. Also, we would like to motivate journals to implement open peer review, authorship contributorship stat statements and underlying research data publishing. Did I forget to mention that Herchak mean hamster in Croatia, in Croatian language? Thank you so much, Jadranka. Next, we have Finland. I will have to be a little bit more pushy and bossy here because we are uh, running out of time here. So, Sami, if I could uh, ask you to stick to your five to seven minutes, that would be absolutely fantastic.
thank you. I will start running now. Okay. Um, in, in Finland, we have this journal.fi. It's maintained by the Federation of Learned Societies, or the Learned Societies of Finland. Uh, it's based on an open journal system. And the first time we published it or uh, launched it, it was 2008. But it had a new start uh, 2017 with a major update, PR campaign. And actually, there was a project also that tried to figure out how to uh, finance uh, open publishing, but we, we didn't get that finished. Uh, still, we are, which means that we are still working on, on, on those questions. However, uh, even without funding, it's been a success story. Uh, we have had uh, 2017 about 30 journals and currently over 100. It's about one, one, one new journal per month coming moment, uh, at, at the moment. Uh, the main languages of the journals are Finnish and Swedish, which is actually an official language in Finland, and of course English, but there are also other languages. Uh, and these journals publish also other than peer-reviewed content. However, uh, it's free for our member societies, but if you are, the journal is coming from some other kind of organizations, they will need to publish peer-reviewed uh, material. Uh, the, the learned societies that our, mem our members do not have to do that. It's also also the criteria is, is a little bit different regarding uh, about the open access is, is so so our, our members do not have to publish immediate open access they may have even a 12 months embargo though not too many are taking advantage of that and mainly working on diamond model uh, if if you are coming from some other organization then you will have to publish immediately open content. Uh, for our member organization, it's free, as I said, and, and there's nominal fee for other organizations, about 200 euros, I think, per year. So it's, it's cheap for anybody. Thanks for chasing the slide. Uh, it's basically funded by our government as uh, the Federation of Learned Societies, TSV there, is funded by government. Uh, for the major update, which I mentioned, we had a, this project and, and we had about 100,000 euros covering uh, programming translations, pre, uh, PR related traveling expenses and so on. Uh, currently there is one, one person working full time and taking care of the technical maintenance support and development. Uh, he does quite a lot of programming also, also for the main engine OGS. And then there's another person uh, taking care of training for new users and, and taking care of or some administrative work, for example, contract related uh, stuff. And then there's one more me uh, that has uh, policy and strategy level responsibility and, and, and overall responsibility over, over this service. So all together, three persons working directly with journal.v. And next slide. Agatha, can you? Yes, I'm moving slide. my slides. I really sincerely don't know why there is such a delay with you Thanks. seeing them. Do you uh, see them now? I see it now. Yes, uh, right. I'm because I'm running. I'm I'm I'm. I don't have patience here now. Okay. Uh, the key services, of of course, the OJS is designed for for especially editing scientific journals including peer review and and, and uh, handling that process but of course also publishing which is the service that everybody from outside sees only uh we also uh the key service is also that metadata moves to all uh, major national and international databases uh the metadata license is cco cc cc Giro, uh defined in the contract with, with, with the publishers so so we are free to do with that anything we want uh then we also sub, have, have technical support for, for journal publishers uh, a reasonable amount that in, of course 
and uh, we have a deal with Crossref regarding DOI's stove layout free to the journals. And we do also promotional work for, for the platform and journals. So next slide. Uh, I will not go through this. I just uh, leave everybody uh, for a while to contemplate it. Uh, basically, this is the, the technological system and technical system that we have. So you, you can see that the meta, uh, metadata is moving everywhere. And, and, and some other things there, you, we, we got this deal with uh, Crossref. So we have DOIs and ORCIS and everything is going everywhere from there, basically. So uh, next slide, perhaps then. So this is one one thing I, I would like to mention here is is is, is that as, as you can see uh, the role of learned societies in Finland, when it comes to uh, peer reviewed publishing channels, uh, publishing those, is decisive. It's an extremely large portion of of, of peer reviewed channels are being uh, published by learned societies, which means that we of course have this. Uh, in, in our, our service and, and, and can reach for, for them. Those numbers there, however, include actually also uh, not only journals, but uh, book series. So you, so, well, you, you can see that, that uh, the Finnish channels are quite well covered by, by uh, learned societies. Okay, next slide. which is the last one, I think. Oh, we, we did a journal.fi user survey. Uh, I will send you a, a link to those results via, via chat soon. But uh, we were wondering in, in what role people come to download articles. And from here, you can see that actually uh, researchers are, are only the second largest uh, group of users there. It's very important for the students that they have have uh, open access uh, journals and and also Finnish uh, written uh, published in Finnish those kind of journals, and then we have private citizens, other experts which m might be civil servants, for example, teachers use it, some journalists, uh, and 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 not too many politicians seem to be interested in in scientific information. But we are also uh, running uh, campaigns, peer campaigns, to make, make this uh, known in relevant groups. For example, uh, our nas nas national uh, uh, public libraries and currently uh, science editors that are working in mainstream, in mainstream me media. So, OK, I think that was seven minutes, quite close at least. Thank you so much, Sami. So uh, I'm making an executive decision here because I think that there is something wrong on my part, on my side with the connection. So I just asked Yahoon to step in as a co-host here. And Yahoon, if you could share the slide deck from your computer then and just move the slides for the panelists, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And uh, we can start with- uh, Can you see it? Yes, we can see it but not as a presentation uh -huh. so you have to sure. start okay. the presentation but yes we can see it yep thank you so much so Sandra, over to you yes it's perfect thank you so much Yahon. thank you i will try to keep the five seven minutes uh in mind so can you move to the next slide please okay so i wanted to provide a bit of context about who is open edition or what we are. So Open Edition is a French national research infrastructure since 2016, and it's supported and funded by major research institutions, uh, which is quite important because it means that uh, uh, we, uh, we keep science and the humanities and social sciences as a public service, which means that we are free of charge for our user communities. 
and we have a strong support and what we provide are digital resources in the humanities and social sciences uh, via mainly four platforms. One I will uh, present more uh, in details uh, later uh, is open edition journals, but we also have a platform for books with more than 2, 000, uh, 12 thousand books, one for academic blogs with uh, 4,200 blogs today, and calendar, which is for uh, the announcements of academic events with more than uh, 48,000 events today. So we have a mission, which is to promote open publication and communication in the humanities and social sciences. And as such, we are part of the French National Plan for Open Science. I think it's important to uh, stress out that we have a, a role in the French national policy for open science. Next slide, please. So we started with not such uh, institutional support because it began in 1999 with two online journals uh, in history. Uh, and they were French journals that published in French. And it was an initiative by young scholars that wanted to give access to uh, knowledge in uh, the humanities and social sciences. Today, the platform hosts uh, 568 online journals. We will soon have 600 journals in all fields of the SSH, and we provide access to more than 300,000 open access documents in 39 languages coming from 33 countries. Next slide, please. I go very quickly. What is important is that all our journals are peer reviewed and our model is mainly diamond open access journals. Today, uh, we have 462 journals who are in open access, which are 82% uh, of the platform. As you can see, there was an increase uh, along the years from uh, 2011 with half half of the journals, some with embargo period, some in open access, and now it's eight, more than 80% uh, of the platform in open access. Of these open access journals, uh, 2009 are registered in the Doge. Uh, we gained major visibility with more than 5 million visits per month for the journal platform only. And as you can see, it's not only the French speaking world who is visiting the contents, it's also the United States that we gain major visibility in the uh, Spanish speaking world and Portuguese speaking world in Latin America. Next slide, please. So uh, to give uh, a short insight on who are our journal editors. In France, most of them, like in Catalonia, they are eager to keep the print version and uh, can be uh, concerned by the fact that they would lose membership if they go uh, to open access model. They are also willing to keep their independence, meaning their autonomy, their scientific and editorial autonomy. And we are working with them uh, in that uh, direction. They are asked by institution to demonstrate that they are compliant best practices. And they are asked to go toward more transparency and towards open access. They are not always aware of the economic costs. We are free of charges, which doesn't mean that there is no cost uh, under our activities, but it's supported by public funds. And the journals are more and more multilingual, and our platform is more and more internationalized. 
So I gave an insight on the top six number of countries we publish on our platform with a partnership in Italy and in Portugal, which explains why they are coming second in Italy. We publish in all languages. Uh, okay, I can go on. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's okay, you can uh, stay okay, there. Okay. <laughs> so, science, to give an insight on scientific publishing in France, uh, there is a very ancient and strong tradition of academic publishing. The most ancient journal is the Journal des Savants, founded in, uh, as you can see, a very long time ago, and is still active and is a peer-reviewed journal. Publishers or university presses, uh, they can be either private companies or uh, public funded only. Uh, publishers are also universities and non-profit organizations with, uh, in France, we have the Association Loi 1901. Uh, most learned societies are also uh, under the status of Association Loi 1901. We also have some private publishers, so it's very heterogeneous. I want to stress the role of public authorities and uh, the public policies in France towards the development of open science. And I gave uh, some uh, main uh, years uh, for the development and the focus on that aspect with uh, the Loi pour une République numérique which uh, says that uh, public funded articles must be released at least in an open archive, uh, not more than uh, 12 months after publication for SSH. And also the creation of the French Committee for Open Science, the first and second French National Plan for Open Science and uh, several studies about the future of scientific publishing in France and the economic costs uh, for journals and for uh, platforms such as open edition. So um, it's really important to have that in mind to understand how it is possible to have diamond open access in France. Also, we have a, a strong tradition uh, in France of centralization as you know, so it helps. Next slide, please. Uh, our key services is a double external review for application, and it's submitted to our scientific board. Not all journals will uh, be accepted on our platform. And we will support the editorial team throughout all the journal's life cycle. We are not OGS. We provide our own software, which is Lodel, dedicated to SSH publishing. You can see that we provide full text in native XML TEI for the uh, structure of the full text, HTML, PDF, EPUBs. We acquire the DOIS. Uh, we provide also R&D enhanced features uh, such as cross-linking and many projects that I won't have time to present. And we also provide services for libraries and institutions with a program which, is, which aims at developing the open access and is a sustainable program both for libraries and publishers. Uh, last slide, please. I will not go through that, but our challenges for the next 10 years are to pursue the transition to open access, to pursue our efforts in innovation, and to pursue our efforts in internationalization, uh, mainly via the uh, European infrastructure operas. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. And now for the Netherlands. Jan Willem. Yes, thank you uh, for this opportunity. Um, 
I think Open Journals differs from the other projects uh, or pop platforms in the sense that uh, we, we just started about a year ago. We are a diamond open access journal platform in the Netherlands. The project was started about a year ago. Um, our platform is based on uh, OJS technology, uh, very common, and we are small. Uh, currently, we have about 14 journals on the platform. We have about six more onboarding, and we're speaking with about 10 to 15 other journals who are interested in joining. We're working with a project team, uh, three part-timers, about 1.2 FTEs. And uh, the technical support and maintenance is done by uh, the IT department of the Royal Dutch Academy of Sciences. Next slide, please. Um, we work mainly for uh, independent editorial boards. Uh, so these are sometimes informal networks, uh, but also for societies, associations. Uh, we're publishing one museum journal speaking to more museums who want to publish their journal with us, and uh, also university presses. There is a, a new university press in uh, Radboud University in Nijmegen. Tilburg University also has a, a publishing services. So we, we see those initiatives at universities and they can use our platform. The topics of the journals are mainly in humanities and social sciences. We have some paramedical uh, topics as well. And um, most of the journals will have a local focus, so dealing with uh, national history or national culture, but they are mainly publishing in English as well. Um, some journals are publishing in Dutch, French or Italian. Next slide, please. The services that we provide is uh, preparing journals for uh, joining the platform. So that means uh, making sure that they uh, comply with the criteria that we have set. There is training in using the platform because we set up the platform, but it's the editorial boards that are using the platform. Uh, so we set up the platform, we configure the platform, we deliver it to the uh, editorial uh, teams. Um, we set up uh, the DOI registration for the articles. We tell uh, editorial boards how to use that. We also arrange application for the directory of open access journals, uh, which is actually one criteria for journals to uh, join us, that they have to comply with those criteria. Um, and we also take care of migration of back issues if they are there. And in some cases, that means uh, they need to be converted as well. That is something we do. Uh, part of the service is also archiving through the PKP network, a preservation network, uh, but we also have an arrangement with Portico. And of course, and this is what our uh, IT department does, uh, the maintenance and the upgrades of the platform. Next slide, please. Uh, finances. Uh, so we are a new project. Uh, it's a three-year project. Um, we have a total budget of about uh, half a million euros. Um, most of that is uh, through a subsidy from the Dutch Research Council. Um, then there are supporting organizations, for example, those university presses I mentioned, or libraries, uh, they chip in as well. And we ask journals to contribute two and a half thousand uh, euros uh, annually. That's the current situation. This is a setup situation. Uh, we are also thinking about uh, you know what will happen after 2023 uh, the budget uh, can be smaller at that time because then things are set up and we also want to go to a uh, financial situation where the contribution of journals becomes less or even zero next slide please the criteria for journals so for journals who want to join the platform we have a few criteria uh, first of all they have to be diamond open access meaning that, of course, they have to be access, uh, open access, but they should also not ask for any financial contributions from authors or their institute. Journals have to be peer reviewed, um, uh, although, yeah, we can, we are a bit flexible about, you know, what is peer reviewed or not, but they need to be true scientific uh, journals. And then, as I mentioned, uh, they have to be either uh, registered in a DOAJ or they are working towards registration. And that comes with um, requirements along uh, the lines of copyright licensing 
the information a journal needs to put on the website, uh, the quality control process, so that's peer review, and uh, publish at least five research articles per year. Next slide. Uh, just some observations. Uh, we just started, uh, but we do see that it is a, uh, a good moment for journals to, to kind of consider what they are doing and whether they should do things differently now with an open journals platform than before. Uh, also in terms of, of, of the editorial communication policies, especially for societies, um, it, this, this becomes a wider discussion. We see uh, new journals developing. Some of those journals that we have on our uh, platform, which is recently launched. And we also see the formation of clusters of journals, which is interesting because we're hoping there will be collaboration uh, among those journals. Next slide. Um, sorry, uh, yeah, the future, uh, that should not say observation. The future is that we wanna host about 30 to 40 journals by mid. 2023, we uh, are in discussions about a sustainable long-term business model. So the financial part of this is of course challenging. We're looking at expanding functionality of the platform, uh, always interested in having more journals on board. And um, there are several OJS platforms in academic Netherlands. And uh, we're also uh, interested in increasing collaboration with these platforms. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Jan Willem. I think that we are done with all the presentations now. And Jahun, thank you so much for your help. Um, I will now open the floor for questions. So if the, there are any questions from coming from the audience, please just do type them in the chat window. And I will kick off, uh, kick off our discussion here. Asking, um, asking a very general question about, about the very beginnings of your projects. So I would like to ask, um, could you tell us a little bit more about your initial motivations um, that um, were there and that, that um, motivated you, that pushed you to set up your national or regional OA publishing platforms? Um, who would like to start? Yadranka, would you like to take this one? Thank you, thank you, Agata. Yes, I already mentioned that. Uh, what what we find out is that uh, uh, since journals in Croatia are published usually by universities or learned societies, and uh, uh, we have very rarely situation that uh, publisher is publishing more than one journal. They are small, small publishers usually, and they are lacking. Uh, technical support and uh, knowledge and uh, everything needed to set up their online journal. So we, the, our just first intention was to provide for them free of charge platform to get uh, uh, the journals uh, uh, published online in few steps uh, and uh, very easily in uh, in uh, a very short time so and i remember at that time we plan if we have a uh, 50 journals we will be very successful so uh, the 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 fact that we have 500 journals now now it shows that for such a small country and small community common platforms are uh, very much needed Thank you so much, Yadranka. Um, I also am interested in, um, well, the fact that um, what we were presenting here today, what you were all presenting, um, is a, a sort of coordination of OA publishing, being, be it on a national or a regional level. So I was wondering, what are, what are the strengths of such an approach? What are the strengths in coordinating OA publishing on a national or, or regional level? Um, Yahun, I'm, I'm looking at you for this question. Would you be able to take it on? Uh, yes, so I, I, I think you can have um, several uh, opportunities um, um, working together. So for instance, if we take it to the Netherlands, uh, we've seen um, institutional library-based publishing um, happening for quite a while, for years, let's say 15 years or so. Um, small, very small, sometimes a bit bigger. 
Um, but organizing this in a sort of collaborative way, uh, at least also for the near future, that, that hopefully happens. Um, share resources. So, for instance, the funding perspectives, of course. Um, but also, um, and that's something I like to, to say here as well, um, uh, looking at all these um, uh, projects, uh, um, uh, we see that it's, this is mainly the HSS, uh, the SSH um, disciplines that are benefiting from those um, national platforms. Um, Yadranka, you showed something, uh, I think, over 50%, and the, the rest is more in the, in the STEM disciplines. But for the others, it's really focused on the, uh, the SSH disciplines. And what we've seen in the Netherlands, for instance, is that, that the transition for those very niche, smaller community journals is very difficult uh, to go to a full open access model. Um, coming from print, for instance, or um, uh, establishing a new journal and then uh, asking APCs, for instance, is difficult for those, those areas. So um, we saw that there, there, there is a need besides uh, the, the big read and publish deals we have currently in the Netherlands, um, uh, APC-based publishing. We needed to have a, um, another model, so the diamond non-APC model uh, uh, next to it um, to help these journals in those more smaller communities uh, transition to full OA and, and sharing resources, but also um, uh, um, uh, so helping others, for instance, with their with with expertise coming from libraries, coming from publishers, university publishers. Um, uh, I guess it's also something that 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 can be done on a regional level. So sharing knowledge about all these aspects, uh, because as, if if I look at the presentations, we all struggle with the same sort of stuff, right? Um, preservation, funding, uh, uh, archiving. Uh, professionalization, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, on on a, on a, on a in, in a collaborative way, uh, I I think you can make uh, bigger steps, and and I even want to extend it uh, because we are all um, seeing the same sort of problems. Um, the question would be, uh, can we work together on a on a European scale with these platforms? Because we now have five, but there are several more uh, in Scandinavia. We have in Sweden, uh, they start a platform. In Denmark, um, uh, no, there are several, several others in, in Europe. So that would be a question I would raise here, um, and maybe some someone wants to respond on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, would someone like to respond to this question about a more European level coordination? Any of our panelists? Okay, I'll leave it as an open question for now then. <laughs> But we, Too much actually, for now. <laughs> we actually do have quite interesting questions coming from the audience. So I'm very happy to see that uh, and keep them coming. So we have um, our first question coming from Margot and she is asking, we have a lot of library delegates today present. Are we as library infrastructures prepared to support these national platforms? Meaning, do we have the right funding models in place? And do libraries already informed um, in a way that they understand the meaning of these platforms. How would you comment on that? Um... Agata, I uh, misspelled. So it, it's not, uh, and do libraries? So are libraries actually are libraries. informed enough? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, you. I messed that no, up. No, no, that's completely fine. I think it was, it's absolutely understandable and it's a great question. Who would like to tackle this one from our, Panelist Sandra, do I see you raising your hand? Great. Yes, maybe I can give a open edition perspective on that. Um, we have, uh, I do not know if libraries are uh, enough informed. I know that we are doing specific work with libraries, uh, with our uh, freemium program. And we invented CD's program 10 years ago because we were aware that uh, since we were full open access mainly, uh, the libraries didn't mediate our content in, uh, uh, with the, uh, the researchers or the students because it was already there. And the fact that we had this program uh, made us talk with librarians and talk with them with what would they need, what services do they need, how can we provide our resources in a way that they can use it and uh, exploit it and mediate it 
with the researchers, with the students, etc. And I think that was our response. It's one response, there are others, I guess. Thank you so much, Sandra. I, I hope this is a satisfactory answer for you, Margot. Can, can, can I add? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. Opinion. Go ahead, Luis. Yes. Yeah, in I, I am librarian myself, and during uh, centuries, libraries collected uh, but uh, information. But our role is is not collect. Our role is to put in contact people with content. We we've been collecting because. The, the 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 collecting is is the is the is a is a is a is an instrument to connect people and content, and we did this when the the the, the unique way to to put people in contact uh, in contact between uh, information was to to collect the the physical information together, but now our mission uh, still remains to be to connect people and content, but connecting people and content means to put metadata and to put information in the network in the correct place. And it's for, for that is, is, is that libraries are, is still our mission to be close to the, to the authors and close to the, and helping uh, authors and helping publishing um, companies or societies to put the information in the network, because now it's not the same. Uh, some years ago, it was quite easy. In even a small society, they can go to a printer and to the, please print for me this journal. But now it's technically is quite complicated. It needs, you need some kind of train and you need some kind of infrastructure. And libraries has the training, the, the, the knowledge, the skills, and in a lot of cases also the infrastructure. So in my opinion, the role of libraries is very important. It's instrumental, but important. Thank you so much, Luis. Uh, Yadranka, I can see your hand up. Yes, I, I fully agree with Luis, but there is something, I don't know if it's, it's present in other countries, but uh, uh, in Croatia, librarians are, are very serious uh, when it comes to uh, about uh, uh, commercial publishers, and they uh, they are aware that uh, sub subscriptions to commercial publishers and big deals and everything are very very expensive. So, and they uh, find still that their primary mission is to uh, to take care about uh, access to the content provided by big publishers. So I think that we need to do, uh, uh, of course, in general, they are really heavily using, uh, in our case, Herchak and, and, uh, and other, other platforms uh, which are free of charge. But, uh, and I think that Margot's question is really great and we need to think uh, uh, how actually to, transfer some money which uh, is now invested in uh, uh, big commercial publishers and uh, redirected to the uh, uh, publishing platforms. That's my opinion. Thank you so much, Yadranka. And I also saw that Sami uh, commented in, uh, in the chat window. Uh, Sami, would you like to talk about the Finland's approach here? Because you are you're saying that you work closely with the National Library. Yes, we, we do work closely. We, we have this project that I mentioned, uh, which was the new beginning for this this uh, platform, was run together with the National Library. Uh, they were working with with the financing model, and and we with the technical side of this. And and uh, unfortunately, the financing model of this, of course, was much more difficult to. To, to, to uh, come up with that did not really work out, though we are still working on, on that. Uh, somebody there uh, mentioned that perhaps this consortia could be could be uh, built, uh, uh, funding consortia, which would be a great idea, but we have really tried hard in Finland to build this consortia to uh, finance open access publishing uh, on journals that already are mostly working and or relying on, on, on voluntary work. It 
it has been extremely difficult. The university libraries have not been interested in this and we have tried and tried and tried. I do of course understand that they don't, they also are afraid of their finances and so on, but, but well, it's been difficult in that sense. But otherwise we have good connections um, with, with the university libraries, the national library, and, and we did a good campaign with the public libraries, which were not that well aware of this uh, service, but now I can see that they are adding this to their databases and so on. So it's, it was a good campaign. Thank you so much, Sami. And I see Jan Willem, you want to say something? Yeah, um, I, um, I, I think the greatest challenge about uh, what we're trying to do, the Diamond Open Access Publishing, is indeed financing. Uh, how, how do you finance this? And uh, I think that is why collaboration is very important. I, I think if you have a lot of small initiatives, that will eventually be more expensive than trying to centralize things. Um, and also, I would like to comment that although I see, of course, that there is a lot of interest uh, uh, in, in the library community, I also think that it should be recognized that publishing is a different uh, job than being a librarian. And uh, so, so I would be very much in favor of having a, say, uh, academic based uh, international library organization, publishing organization that is focused very much on, on diamond open access, but then also takes into account um, costs, um, efficiency, because I think that is very important uh, for all these uh, um, endeavors to become uh, successful. Thank you so much, Jan Willem. Um, oh, I have Yadranka with her hands up, hand up. Yes, if Go you ahead. allow me to add something I, I forgot to mention. So la, the, the primary roles of libraries is, is to meet uh, the needs of the users. So, so if we want to have uh, uh, actually libraries on board, we need to make diamond journals more attractive and more popular among researchers. And that's very much connected with the research assessment and the criteria, criteria which we are applying. So uh, if we will have a research community really keen to publish in diamond journals uh, when we reach this stage, then I think that uh, libraries will be much more uh, supportive and uh, but still we have the situation that uh, that uh, journal from big publishers are, are really needed and uh, research communities asking for access to Elsevier or Springer's journals. So, and in this situation, it's uh, really, yes, there is a place for libraries to promote publishing in diamond journals. And I'm sure they can do a lot in this area, but, uh, uh, they will just serve research community needs and we need to change research assessment system. Thank you so much, Adranka. Um, there is another question coming from the audience. Now, not, not exactly about libraries. And I was thinking perhaps Sami also could address this because here we are talking about uh, languages other than English. So the question is, all the presenters referred to the importance of publishing in local language. I wonder what advice the platforms give to editors who say that they want to increase discoverability of the content by publishing in English. This is a common piece of feedback that we get at DOAJ. Journals want to upload in both languages or only English, as they say it increases discoverability. Um. Okay, uh, well, it's partly true, it's a partial truth. I mean, if, if you took a look on the slide that I showed you, who are, who are the users of, of, of journal.fi, it's clear, uh, there is more information. I, I put a clean, uh, cl uh, link on, on the chat. So if, if you wanna take a look at that, about the languages that people are reading there. So it was only the researchers that were uh, keen on English papers. So if, if you have other kind of audiences, for example, the students, so they are, it's much more approachable for them in, in, in for example, in their mother tongue or in, in Finland, in Finnish and so on. 
and also also if, if you want to share it with a larger other larger audiences than not only only with, with, with the researchers it's then again i mean of course it's it's a different thing uh if, if you published on on research on on something that has a a uh, large local importance. It's, it's important in, in local settings, but not that interesting in in in, uh, in the worldwide setting. So in in some some other countries, then I can. I'm, I'm not sure what is the point of of writing about that, for example, only in English. I'm, I mean, something that the researchers should do. They should write in English but also in some other languages, or at least it should be the situation in, in any university or department that not English is not the only language. It's of course an important language and, and in, in some subjects, it's basically the perhaps the only reasonable uh, language that you should publish, but there are plenty of uh, research interests that would be served better if the results would be published in, in some other language than in English. Thank you, Sami. And Sandra, I see that you also would like to address this one. Yes, I'm not sure uh, I want to address this question uh, in France. And we are a platform, I, uh, we call that, uh, uh, we are a platform for HSS and the tradition of publishing in its language uh European language, French, uh, is a strong tradition and researchers want to keep uh, the possibility to publish in English. They don't want so much to publish in English uh, for our films. But sometimes they think that if uh, their journals could be uh, entirely translated, it would help uh, them being more discoverable or they think that if they change the title of their journals, they would be more discoverable. Then uh, we don't advise to do so, but uh, uh, what we recommend is to have the metadata fully translated uh, in English, uh, title, abstract, uh, et cetera, so that we can, uh, register also the articles in the Doge. That's the work we do for the journals. Uh, that's for one council. And uh, the other one is that we are very interested in many initiatives uh, around translation uh, that are uh, projects that are led by journals themselves that are addressing this question. What language do we need? to publish science, how can we translate from what language to what other language? But for us, the key uh, issue is around metadata. Uh, that's our answer as open edition. Thank you so much, Sandra. And uh, as much as it pains me, I think that we have to park the discussion because we are running out of time. Uh, but uh, I think that the, the webinar today showed us that there, there are a lot of questions that people uh, are still willing to ask uh, about national and um, regional open, open access publishing platforms. So we were thinking uh, that perhaps uh, we should continue these sessions. So I actually would like to uh, launch my last poll and hopefully it will work. So here it is and it should appear on your screen. So we wanted to ask you, if we were to continue having sessions or national, on national OA platforms or regional OA platforms, I should have added this one, which of the following subjects would you be most interested in? And we have different, um, different um, options here. So we have governance, we have sustainability, we have interoperability and open infrastructure, community engagement or other. And if there is something else that you would be interested in talking about, please do put your um, your types uh, in the in the chat window. So I'm very very interested in seeing which one of the ones that we spotted as possible uh, topics for further discussion would be the most uh, popular here. 
I will leave it open for another 30 seconds and then share the results with you. But from what I can see, we have a clear winner. Okay, so last call and I'm ending the poll now and sharing the results for you. So as you can see, there is very close competition between sustainability, which I think was, uh, was also quite, um, quite obvious from our discussion here, and interoperability and open infrastructure. These are the topics that, um, that you are the most interested in uh, continuing uh, having conversations on. So I hope that we can deliver. Um, so hopefully uh, see you very soon um, in a, another session and another webinar. For today, uh, we have to park here. Thank you very much to all of uh, our panelists. Thank you for bearing with my poor connection. Unfortunately, there is a crazy storm in Berlin. So, uh, so that's why it was a little bit delayed. Thank you everyone. And thank you very much everyone who came. Uh, the session is recorded. So we will be sharing the recordings and someone also asked, asked if the slide deck will be shared. So yes, we will also share the slide deck. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone.